Thank you for the introduction, and it's uh, wonderful to see so many friends in this special holiday, even as we gather with such heavy hearts. Our prayers are with the people of Monterey Park and Half Moon Bay, and after yet another spree of gun violence in America. I'm going to use this. Is this working? Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me with this? Yes. All right. You know, I've been in close contact with Governor Newsom and uh, to provide the full support of the federal government. And Kamala, who has deep ties in the area, is just getting back uh, from spending some time there with families. And uh, I spoke with Brandon Say, a, general her a genuine hero. This is a 26-year-old kid, 26-year-old kid, whose family has owned the dance studio for some time. As people were ending the celebration that night on for the, new, the Lunar New Year. And as we all saw in the video, he, uh, he heard the front door close. And saw a man pointing a gun at him. And instead of running, Brandon said he thought he was going to die. But then he thought about the people inside. Think about this now. Just think about this in reality. And in that moment, he follows instinct. And he followed his courage. And this is a kid who went out, a kid, he's a young man, and had the courage to act, and he did. He charged the gunman, wrestled him to the ground, and took away a semi-automatic pistol from him. He had just shot and killed 11 people and wounded several more in another dance studio nearby. You know, it was a struggle that Brandon prevailed. But think about what could have happened had he not done this. I really mean it. And I think sometimes we under, underestimate incredible acts of courage. Someone shooting has a semi-automatic pistol aimed at you. And you think about others. That's pretty profound. Pretty profound. You know, and in both uh, Monterey Bay and Half Moon Bay, we saw the heroism of police officers, firefighters, and first responders. They answered the call. They answered the call. They rushed into danger, and they saved lives and protected their neighbors. These are tight-knit communities, as you all know. They'll be affected by what they saw and what they lost for the rest of their lives. We've got to think about the impacts of post-traumatic stress on many of these folks. And as a nation, we have to be there with them. We have to be there with them. We don't have a choice. You know, uh, I know several members of Congress wanted to attend here tonight because they wanted to be able to uh, uh, but they have votes up on the Hill, including my dear friend Judy Chu. Judy is chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus and a former mayor of Monterey Bay. I spoke with Judy uh, several days ago and said, Judy, what should I do? Should I continue to, should I be in California or should I sell, have this celebration? And she felt very strongly. She said, we have to move forward. Her message was, don't give in to fear and sorrow. Don't do that. Stand in solidarity and in the spirit of toughness that this holiday is all about. She went on to say that's what folks are doing back in California and across the country, providing counseling support, transition services for the victims' families, holding candlelight vigils and bringing people together, and showing that even with heavy hearts, we have unbreakable spirits. So that's what we're going to do tonight to be there for each other. And by the way, you know, uh, I said, as some of my senior staff here knows, that um, I was going to have the most diverse staff in American history. I was going to reflect what the population of America looked like. Well, I knew we had more women than men. <laughs> oh. But I looked up the following. You know what percentage of AA and Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders is in this administration? 13.7%. The next highest was 7%. That's why the hell I'm doing so well right now. No, but all kidding aside, most of all, we think about the loved ones who were left behind. There were grandparents, parents, 
aunts, uncles, siblings, friends, neighbors, but they're fellow Americans. So please join me in a moment of silence to honor them. May God bless them all. You know, I'm really honored to be with you all tonight. For centuries, families in Asia and the United States and all around the world have gathered to celebrate the first moon of the new year. It's a time of renewal and reflection, hope and possibilities for good over evil, for sharing meals, for celebrating firecra no firecrackers tonight. <laughs> Fire no, I'm serious. I was thinking about that, you know. If things hadn't been like they've been the last couple of years, we should have fireworks outside. But, uh, you know, uh, celebrating with firecrackers and dance. We got dance. <laughs> Honoring your ancestors while passing down traditions to the next generation. All of you here and across the country have opened your hearts and homes to friends and neighbors and wish each other a prosperous new year, full of good health and good fortune. So to start the new tradition of the nation for holidays that where uh, home is central, Jill and I are honored to welcome you to the first Lunar New Year reception of this scale held in the White House, your home. This is your home. Now, this, this is the people's house, for real. Jill and I are very temporary residents in this home. But all kidding aside, well, God, <laughs> God love you. Look, you know, for many of you, this is the year of the rabbit. And for others like the Vietnamese, Vietnamese community, it's the year of the cat. The rabbit, earnest and persistent in the face of great challenges. The cat, majestic, beloved, a protector. By the way, that sounds like our cat Willow, who maybe, <laughs> you think I'm kidding, Willow may walk in here any time now. She has no limits, and oh, you think I'm kidding, I'm not. Especially in the middle of the night when she climbs up and lays on top of my head. <laughs> Look, all of you reflect the values represented by these symbols, and I mean that sincerely. And the Lunar New Year offers an opportunity to acknowledge the many ways you've enriched this country through diversity of culture, the breadth of achievements, including a record number of Oscar nominations that were announced just this week. <laughs> And that are long overdue. I know nothing about entertainment. <laughs> but I know when people are picked to this best. And speaking of winning, we're honored to be joined by Olympic champion, gold and civil and bronze medalist, a three-time world champion, figure skater, Nathan Chen. Nathan, where are you? Nathan, good to see you, pal. Come here. Get up here. You're the only guy that can step. Good to see you, Nathan. Thank you. That's not bad. Gold medal, bronze. Holy mackerel. <laughs> also includes the great work uh, led by those in my administration. I heard we have an ambassador uh, who's a daughter of immigrants, and she happens to be, uh, I think her name is Catherine Tai. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Thank you. You're doing a hell of a job for us. You really are. By the way, she's gained the respect of folks around the world. Not a joke. Not a joke. She's the best. The first, first Asian-American woman of color to serve as U.S. Trade Representative. And just last week, she helped launch the first ever national strategy to advance equity, justice, and opportunity for Asian-Americans. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I got other world leaders saying, you don't explain this very well. Send her back, will you? Really, <laughs> you're doing a hell of a job, kid. Thank you, thank you. And together with Congress, we passed historic legislation to bring us one step closer to preserving and amplifying the contributions and history of the community through a National Museum of Asian Pacific American History and Culture. And yet for all the progress, this community has experienced profound hate, pain, and violence and loss with the rise of anti -hate, Asian anti-hate crimes. You know, uh, gut-wrenching attacks on elderly immigrant women. As I've said many times before, 
Hate can have no safe haven or harbor in America. No person deserves to be treated with hate as a hateful way. They all deserve to be treated with dignity and with respect. That's why I'm proud with the help of many of you in this room, we signed in the law COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act. The, and to host, <laughs> and to host the first ever White House summit against hate fuel violence. Look folks, it's real simple. Silence is complicity. Silence is complicity. We cannot be silent. I will not be silent. And one more thing, we're gonna ban assault weapons again and if I do I did it once as a senator, we're gonna do it again. And let me close with this. The Lunar New Year ends with the hanging of those red lanterns to symbolize letting go of the past and committing to new beginnings. Well, I mean this sincerely, you've heard me say it many times, I've never been more optimistic in my life about the future of this country and the ability to unify this country. I really mean it. As we gather here today, let's recommit to the work of standing together and taking care of one another. Let's do the work of spreading hope, joy, love. So from the Biden family to yours, we wish you a happy, healthy, prosperous new year, and please enjoy the reception of the wonderful program that's about to begin. <laughs> I guess I got to step down here.